Hey guys, welcome back. This is a quick tutorial on object stores within MuleSoft and the Anypoint platform. Uh, the version numbers that I'm going to be working with today are Anypoint Studio 7.4.2, Mule EE 4.2.2, and then the object store 1.1.3. And I'll briefly talk about how object stores work within Mule 3 as well. Um, but yeah, let's get to it. So to kind of start off, object stores come in, uh, the object stores with MuleSoft, uh, there's a couple components that make up the concept of an object store, right? You have the object store connector, which is found in AnyPoint Studio that allows you to take data that you want to store in memory and in a key value format and store that either to the worker itself or an on-prem meal runtime, Cloud Hub object store version one or any point object store v2 and i'll go over the differences between v1 and v2 uh, during this presentation as well so to start off let's talk about the object store connector as well as the object store so the object store connector you can find it in your mule palette in mule 3 and mule 4 within any point studio uh, it's a mule component that allows you to do simple key value storage, right? So you have uh, a key value representation of data that you want to store, and you can retrieve that value by uh, referencing the key. Uh, it, it allows you to serve a wide variety of use cases. Um, you know, some examples are synchronization information such as watermarks. So if you're uh, making a call to a database and you're extracting, you know, a set of data, you want to make sure you set a watermark to understand you've retrieved records. Uh, before the specific point in time, right? Another example is storing temporal information such as an access token. When you authenticate a user, instead of making subsequent calls, you can just reference that access token again. Uh, and then lastly, just storing some simple user information, okay? The object store connector gives you a variety of different uh, storage options, but one of the, 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 the gotchas within Mule is depending on the settings of that connector and where you deploy it and how you deploy it determines where that data gets stored, right? So if you're using the Mule connector and you deploy that application to an on-prem Mule runtime, it's going to leverage the Mule object store. If you deploy that application and you're using Mule 3, it will, uh, and you uncheck the any uh, use any point um, object store v2, it's going to use the version one of object store. And then if you leave that checked, uh, the, the use object store v2, it'll default to the uh, any point object store v2. Okay. And we'll get into the difference between those two versions later on in the presentation. Okay. Um, the connector configuration. So once you create a project and you've dragged a connector in, you can leave it blank and it'll default to, to the default object store, or you can go ahead and create multiple object store uh, instances. You can give them their own name and you can reference those throughout your project. And then uh, with those configurations on the runtime manager, there's a section called object store that allows you to uh, see the different partitions and see the different um, items that are stored in that object store. And you can also delete it directly from that interface. So the object store in Mule 3 and 4, if you kind of peel it back and go back to the, the runtime itself, right? It's the original piece or part of the on-premise runtime, right? The, the Mule runtime. It's fully customizable in user preferences, right? It can either be in memory for fast performance or it can be persistent where you actually store those key value uh, pairs to disk, right? And um, every time you go and retrieve those key value pairs, it has to look that up within the the file store right otherwise you can also store into transient so the the differences between the two are if you deploy an application and you store data into and it's persistent and you stop that meal runtime when you start that meal runtime back up and the application starts back up that data is persisted but if you store it into transient and the app stops right or that meal runtime stops you lose those key value stores okay um Benefit, of course, of the runtime, you know, being on the Mule runtime itself, there's no limit on the key or value size, and there's no limit on the maximum size of the store um, in, to, to some degree, right? You are limited by the amount of memory or the amount of disk space on that specific Mule runtime, okay? Okay, so let's, uh, next, let's talk about the Cloud Hub Object Store. So the Cloud Hub Object Store, uh, the version one, so this was the first release 
of an object store within Cloud Hub. So first release of the object store in uh, version one, uh, one of the major limitations was that it was only accessible from the US East region. So if you deployed your application to US West, when it referenced that object store, it would have to make a call to US East to retrieve that value uh, in relation to the key. Uh, basic database encryption, there was 100,000 keys per application. Um, you had limited by uh, the max size of the value to be one megabyte. So if you had like a 10 megabyte file that you wanted to store, um, you would have to chunk it into one megabyte um, size, you know, a, a size for that value. Uh, and you're also limited to one gigabyte total storage. And I believe that's for uh, the entire application. Okay. Uh, and it was all also available for all Cloud Hub users, so anyone could use it. There was no uh, transactions per second limitation. Um, and then one thing to point out is that within your application, you have to use the default user object store. Okay, uh, if you change the name, it doesn't store data into Cloud Hub Object Store V1. Okay. So the differences in the UI, right, for Runtime Manager. Um, you can see over here on the left, if you uncheck use object store v2, it will default to object store v1 for a mule three application and any data that you store into the object, object store v1, you can see that key value pair. Okay. For mule four, this isn't available, right? So if you uncheck use object store v2, it will default to the worker, uh, the runtime on that worker and leverage either the uh, in memory or to the file store, you know, what, what's available from a file storage um, a restriction, right, on that mule runtime itself. Okay. Um, this this one is around mule three. So you can see here, here's the configuration screen for the object store connector. So if you check persistent um, for an on premise mule runtime using the default, it will survive the redeployments, right, and data is persisted in a local file. Okay. Remember, persistent means. Uh, in memory on in file system. If you uncheck that, it just uses the the RAM, right? The the re, re, random access memory. Okay, um, and then also it will if, if you leverage the default object store again survives redeployment. Data is persisted in a local file. Okay, if you check persistent and deploy that to Cloud Hub, it doesn't re survive redeployments. Remember when you redeploy a new application, it will spin up a whole new worker. And because that data is stored to the local file on that old worker, it doesn't get persisted to the new one that gets spun up, right? Um, if you do leave it for the default user object store, this does leverage Cloud Hub V1. It does survive redeployments, and then data is persisted externally, okay? Okay, so let's get to object store V2 and kind of talk about the differences between V2 and V1. So V2, the, the major difference, as you can see from this map, is that v2 allows your applications when you deploy them to co-locate that object store with the application so when you deploy an application to buenos Aires, it will also spin up a object store uh, for that application in the same region okay better encryption right fips 140-2 unlimited keys per application you also have a 10 megabyte max size of value so instead of one megabyte it's now 10 unlimited total storage, and then there's also a 30-day time to live. So in order to maintain this 30-day time to live, you just have to reference that key um, or store another value from that application every you know every couple of days to ensure that it, it remains within the object store. And then uh, it's also free to use under 10 transactions per second. Uh, there is an add-on that allows you to increase that transaction per second limitation uh, and allow more, um, uh, more transactions, okay? Uh, from an, a UI standpoint, if you check the use object store v2, that's going to change this uh, navigation from application data to object store in both mule three and four. And then once you have that checked and enabled, it will all store those values uh, and you can actually um, access them from the interface from that object store section. Okay. Additionally, if you click on the show client credentials, one of the, another benefit of Object Store V2 is that it provides a REST API. So you have the ability to store value, you know, key value pairs from one application, and then from another app, you can actually leverage the REST API and call and extract those uh, that data from the other app's Object Store. So uh, it's another benefit of that Object Store V2. Okay. 
Um, one other thing to point out with Object Store is that there other there are other components that leverage the Object Store V2. So a good example is the Salesforce uh, streaming API operation, right? If you use the Salesforce connector and you use the streaming API operation, it will leverage the Object Store in the background. Uh, other good examples are the database on table row where it'll actually store the watermark in the object store as well. So there are various components and you'll you'll see um, as you build out your application, there will be a reference to the object store generally uh, where you know you know that you're you're um, leveraging the object store out of the box, okay? And then this chart here just shows the different deployment types, right, at a, at a very high level, right? Mule 3 allows you to leverage V1, V2, and then the on-worker, um, you know, memory, either file system or memory. Um, if you deploy Mule, Mule 3 application to an on-prem, it's going to use the default on-prem uh, file store. From a Mule 4 standpoint, you only have the option of V2 as well as the on-prem um, or the on worker memory store and then on prem of course the same as mule 3 okay okay so let's go ahead and switch over to anyone studio and build out a really really quick example so uh, i've got a blank canvas here let's go ahead and drop in two listeners so the first one here i'm going to do is i'm going to store a value into the object store and then we'll have another flow here that allows us to retrieve those values so we'll call this one uh, get okay um, I've already gone ahead and dropped in the object store component into my palette here. You can go ahead and search uh, under add modules if you have it available, or you can go ahead and add it from exchange. So in this case, for the first one, we want to go ahead and store it, right? So we're going to go ahead and drag the store operation over here to the right. Store, we're going to say that we're going to store a key in here and we'll say hello. Uh, the value. Let's go ahead and just set that to a string for now and say hello world. We're going to leave the object store blank. So by default, this is going to leverage the default persistent object store um, that's part of the meal runtime or within Cloud Hub. Okay, so we're going to leave that the same. And then lastly, let's go ahead and just drop in a transform esx component here to say to let us know that that was successful. Okay, so we'll say that this is a success. And then for the other one, this is the get. Let's go ahead and drop in retrieve. And for the retrieve, again, we're gonna use the default. Let's go ahead and retrieve the key, hello. And if it's not able to get anything from there, it's gonna just grab the default value and we'll just say that this is uh, default. And we'll save that. And then Let's go ahead and take what we get from that component and we'll just go ahead and output that to the user to let them know that they retrieved a value from the object store. Okay. You can see there's some other available operations here. So clear is a good one. If you want to go ahead, if you're, if you're leveraging the object for, store for um, storing keys or storing, you know, data, you can use the clear to go ahead and clear out the entire object store of any value whatsoever. Uh, retrieve all we'll go ahead and pull back all the key value pairs retrieve all keys we'll just pull back a list of keys so um, pretty basic set of operations that are needed just for the object store okay so let's go ahead and run this now we'll save this and we'll give it a couple seconds for this application to spin up and then while it's doing that let's go ahead and switch over to a browser okay so now it's deployed Let's go back over here. Let's go to localhost 8081 and then store the value. So you can see success. We've stored a value directly into the object store. And then if we change this to get now, that's gonna go ahead and get that value from the object store, okay? So pretty straightforward, um, not too much behind this. You know, there's not too much that's complicated behind this. If we go ahead and create a new object store, right? We can give it a name. We can set it to be either persistent or uh, transient we go ahead and uncheck that and then you can also set the time to live as well as the expiration interval right so once you set that um, you want to make sure that anywhere in your project where you're retrieving those values you are also retrieving that from the uh, the object store that you stored this value into okay so you can see here i have three different object stores within this project 
Okay. Cool. Um, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to leave a comment. Um, I'm always happy to help. Thanks.